Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we're going to show you one of the most important concepts you need to know, which is getting around the dreaded false breakout. As always, to show your support, please hit the like button as it goes a long way in supporting our team. So what is a false breakout? In an uptrend, you notice price break through a key level of resistance. So you think to yourself, this shows heavy bullish momentum and you expect price to continue up. So you enter a trend following long trade. Then what happens? Price might move a little more, but then it reverses drastically. You end up holding the bag, losing money, and you got trapped by the false breakout. In a downtrend, the same thing. Price breaks through a key level of support and you think this momentum will continue down. So you get into a trend following short trade. Price then might move slightly more before it reverses drastically. You end up holding the bag, losing money, and you got trapped by the false breakout. This occurs because of three reasons. First, you entered through a simple trend following strategy with nothing else, which is a low quality trade entry. Second, sometimes market makers will use shady methods to manipulate price so that it pushes it slightly through these key levels, which traps amateur FOMO breakout traders. Because this isn't a real momentum move up, once those buy orders dry up, selling pressure begins and price reverses. And third, trend exhaustion. So when you get into a trade close to the start of a move, this is known as a fresh trend, which is where price has legs and room to move because traders just got into the trade and haven't made their money yet. So they most likely aren't closing out these positions so soon. Fresh trends or fresh reversals are higher quality trade entries because you can capture a larger portion of the move as you are getting in early. Now, in contrast, if you get into a trade up here after price has already moved significantly, price might suffer from what we call trend exhaustion, which is when traders have made their money and see potential risks coming up and they decide to start taking profit and locking in gains. If enough people take profit, the trend will reverse. Now, does trend exhaustion mean that the trend will reverse 100%? No, it does not. Price can go on and on. But in terms of trade quality, the higher quality trade entry would be closer to the start of the trend and at the start of a fresh trend change. So now, let's say you really want to trade with breakout momentum, but you don't want to get caught in a false breakout. There are two ways to help you get around this problem. The first way to get around a false breakout is to wait for a continuation pattern to form. So on the left is the four hour time frame, and on the right is the one hour time frame of the same asset. Price breaks through the key level and you decide you want to take a continuation trade long, but you don't know if this is a real breakout or a false breakout. So what you need to do is wait for price to form a continuation pattern on the lower time frame. And the pattern you had in this case was a perfect descending channel pattern. Then once price broke above the pattern and in the same direction of the larger breakout direction, this shows that continued bullish momentum has entered the market and that the consolidation is ended and that this is not a false breakout, but a real breakout. This is then when you would look for a long trade entry point. Now, what happens if price breaks in the opposite direction after the pattern forms? This is the Robin Hood stock. On the left is the Robin Hood four hour time frame, and on the right is the 30 minute time frame. You had your key level here before price broke through the key level. Now, again, you need to wait for a consolidation pattern to form on a lower time frame which you had through this channel pattern that forms. In order to take a long breakout entry, you would want price to break out above, but instead price broke below, which signals a reversal and confirms that this is indeed a false breakout and not a true breakout. So no trade entry long. Now let's get into a better method of getting around false breakouts, which is waiting for what we call a shallow pullback to occur. You have your uptrend before price breaks through the key level. Now what you do is you wait for price to pull back immediately after it breaks and form a candle at the resistance turn to new support, which is what we call a shallow pullback entry. A traditional pullback moves a lot further up and wider out before it pulls back. But a shallow pullback occurs very close to where the breakout occurred. This shallow pullback entry setup allows for new buyers to enter the market and new long positions to be opened which creates continued momentum for the uptrend and allows you to get around a false breakout. Let's show this again. Breakthrough, shallow pullback, long trade setup. Now in a downtrend, this works the same. 
break through, shallow pullback, short trade setup. Again, break through, shallow pullback, short trade setup. Now, this same setup occurred on the Tesla stock as well. On the left is the Tesla daily time frame. You have your resistance zone here. Price then breaks through the key resistance level. Now, to confirm that this is a real breakout and not a fake out, you wait for a shallow pullback like this. But to confirm the shallow pullback is over, use the one hour time frame on the right. When the shallow pullback reached the new support level, price gapped up, which presented a long trade opportunity and confirms that the breakout is real and not a fake out. So now you can actually use false breakouts to your advantage and take reversal trade entries. So you have your key level of resistance. When price breaks through, traders who immediately entered a long continuation trade would have most likely placed their stop losses somewhere in this region here. After they all got trapped and price reversed, all those stop losses were hit, which triggered a massive move in the opposite direction, hence the big bearish momentum candle that formed. So now, knowing that this can occur, you can use this to your advantage and take reversal trades using false breakouts. This way you are getting into a fresh trend trade and not a trend exhausted trade. Let's break this down. You have your key level of support. As price came back down, price breaks through. At this point, you have no idea whether this is a real breakout or a false breakout. So you look inside of this area on a lower time frame and see what you can find. What you had inside of the breakout area was a divergence and a wedge pattern. Once price breaks out above and forms a higher high, this shows that this was a false breakout and not a real breakout. This breakout also confirms the reversal and allows you to take long entries with the momentum from all the stop losses that will be hit on the way up. Now, false breakouts don't just occur through key levels of support or resistance, but they can also occur after a trend line break. Now, trendline break entries are better than support and resistance break entries because trendline breaks often occur at the start of a trend change or close to the start of a fresh trend. Now, trendline breaks can also suffer from false breakouts where it starts as a break, fails, and reverses down. Again, two simple ways to get around trendline break false breakouts. First, a continuation pattern that forms after the trendline break. You first had your double bottom, which gives you bullish momentum for the trade and gives you a long directional bias. The break of the trend line and higher high confirms the double bottom long trade setup. You again wait and see if you have a consolidation pattern that forms on a lower time frame, such as this ascending channel pattern here. And once price broke above, this confirms the trend line break is real and not a fake out. And then you would take long trade entries. Now, the second way to get around a trend line break false breakout is to wait for a pullback entry. Clear moving downtrend before you had your trend line break and higher high. And what you do is you wait and see if you get a pullback entry, such as this one right here, where price pulled back to the new support level and moving average and fib level and formed multiple long wick candles at this area of confluence. After you had your intraday trend change confirmation, you would look for long entry points. Now here is an advanced bonus technique. It's the concept of knowing where price is coming from. Let's say you notice this long wick candle at the key support level and you think to yourself, this is a great long trade. But now if you look to the left and look to where price is coming from, you would know that this isn't the best long trade setup. You had a clear recent short trade setup here through the long wick candle at key resistance, followed by a trend line break, which means there is current bearish momentum. So if you entered this long trade here, you are going against where true momentum is headed and true momentum is bearish and downwards. What this means is there is a higher chance that this long wick candle will fail and price will push right through. Now, a very simple solution. Just pass on the trade setup and move on. That's it. There's hundreds of high quality trade setups a day. No need to risk it on these low quality trade setups. Let's show this again. You notice these two long wick candles at the key resistance level and you think to yourself, this is a great short trade setup. But now if you look to the left and to where price is coming from, you would know that this isn't the best short trade setup. You had a clear recent long trade setup here through the multiple long wick candles reacting to the support level. This was also a wide divergence, which is a higher quality reversal trade setup. And then you also had a trend line break. All of this signals 
current heavy bullish momentum. So if you entered the short trade here, you are going against where true momentum is headed, which is bullish and upwards. What this means is there is a higher chance that the long wick candle will fail and price will push right through. Again, all you have to do is just pass on these lower quality trade setups and move on. Now this same concept applies to false breakouts as well. So you notice this candle break through support, but you aren't sure if this is a real breakout or a potential false breakout. Again, if you look to where price is coming from, you would notice something very telling. You had this recent high quality short trade setup at this area of confluence where the trend line, resistance level, and moving average all crossed. This gives the moving trend a short directional bias and heavy bearish momentum. What this means is this type of breakout has a higher chance of being a true breakout and not a false breakout. In cases like this, it's better to avoid taking any kind of reversal trade because they can end up being fake out reversals where you get a slight pullback or a slight bounce, but then they will continue onwards. The best thing to do in this case would be to take a breakout continuation trade using the methods we have previously showed you in this video, as you have bearish momentum from the recent short trade setup, also known as the trigger event. So we have a new video series we'll be releasing on our channel soon, where we do quick breakdowns of highly requested topics. But right now in the comments, tell us exactly what other topics you want us to cover. It can be anything from trading to investing to finance. Let us know in the comments right now. Also, if you want access to more content and more tools, head on over to our website at wisetrade.com. As always, to show your support, please hit the like button as it goes a long way in supporting our team. And also, go follow our Instagram account at wisetrade. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. The morning light is wandering on my face I can't believe I don't know The day, the time, the place I drive around